Hello, this is God of Seven, and today we're going to begin assembly. Now, assembly is kind of the most low level programming language besides just plain machine code, which is just kind of ones and zeros, you know? We want to use something more manageable that's not just ones and zeros, so we use assembly. Now, there's not just one assembly language, there's multiple like x86, x64. ARM 6502, 65C816, yeah, there's a lot. So, in order to start understanding how, what exactly an assembly language does, how it works, and how it really functions, it kind of deals with a lot of hardware, so we kind of need to discuss some generic hardware concepts first. And then we can get into more language specific stuff but don't worry we'll get into the actual assembly code but for now we need to just learn the basics so let's start real generic to where there's just two things yep two things for the sake of simplicity we're going to call this one RAM and this one ROM Now, RAM actually stands for random access memory. And what that means is that a program can read, write, and do whatever it fit at any time. So if you ever heard of like your PC uses RAM or whatever, like 2 gigabyte, 4 gigabyte, 8 gigabyte, oh, what? that's just how many bytes it can store at a time. This is more so things like where variables would be stored let's say like just a bunch of random numbers in here we might have some text hello we may have like 3d models you never know what we have in here and we'll talk about the connection later but now rom here is the read only memory like it implies you can only read from it and not write to it if you ever notice when you're using like Windows and you're installing an application and you try to delete it, it won't let you. That's because you're kind of running the application, it won't let you do it. Or if you're running a game, you can't modify the game's exe file because it won't let you. Because it's read-only memory, you can't really change it when it's running. You can change it when it's not running, but not while it is. And this is for things like code. We're going to have store code in here. We're also going to have game files, not including save data. That's kind of like something different. It basically comes like that. Games files like for Xbox games or whatever, the ROM would be like the file on the disk. We have our little disk here. Or like, for example, a game like a Nintendo console would have a cartridge. Obviously, this it looks more like an SD card than a cartridge, but it's a general idea. Just a game cartridge you would use to hold the ROM that the, that the system will run. Now, when the, like I mentioned earlier, when the game is running, you cannot change the ROM whatsoever. It's important that you know that. You can't change the ROM. And this is generally like files like .exe, .bin, and .nds, .edc. This could be any of them. Now RAM here on the other hand doesn't really exist as a file. It's more of kind of like a space like, it's kind of like a chip or something in the computer and the hardware. Like, NDS has a RAM that kind of, like, reads and writes to. And it just stores, like, lots of data. Like, in your computer, you can't just access a RAM file when it's not running. That would just be silly. So you can only access the RAM when something is running. And this you can only access when the game is not running. Well, you can read from it. You just can't write to it remember read what the ROM usually does it uses codes to read 
and write to the RAM. So, like, if I have, like, a variable here that is, like, uh, health or whatever, I have HP, like, get HP here. This thing would look into the RAM and see the HP is 60. And now, after it reads the value, it would subtract HP by 1. And that's basically how the game would generally work. Now, we're going to see this in action in just a second here in the next tutorial. Hope you guys like this tutorial. May not seem like not much right now. Don't worry, it's going to get juicy. And I'll see you all later.